In this video, I'm going to talk about Forex leverage, margin requirements, and why it's important to understand if you are going to size your trades properly. Leverage essentially refers to the percentage of funds that you are allowed to borrow from your broker, and it is usually stated in a ratio like 50 to 1 or 200 to 1. In the case of 50 to 1, it means that for every $1 that you put up for your trade, the broker will allow you to borrow 50 more. Or, if your leverage is 200 to 1, then for every $1 you put up, the broker will allow you to borrow 200 more. So, the higher the leverage, the less you have to personally invest in your trades. What this means to you as a trader is when you trade with a higher leverage, you are able to control a vastly larger fund because your investment in the trade is magnified by the leverage. And that can be a really great thing if you have a trade that's going your direction, one that you're making money off of because your profits are reflective of the fund you are controlling, not the actual investment that you have made in the trade. So when a trade is going in your favor, you can make a lot of money really quickly. But when you are in the wrong side of a trade, your loss in the trade is also reflective of the total fund. And you can lose a lot of money, possibly all of your investment, and sometimes even more than you have deposited into your trading account. The margin requirement is the actual amount of money that your broker will require you to put up as a deposit to initiate your trade. Before you can calculate what the margin requirement will be for a specific trade, first you need to understand the information in a currency price quote. The currency price quote tells you what the exchange rate is between the currencies of two specific countries. In this case, the two currencies are the Great British Pound and the New Zealand Dollar. The pair name is abbreviated as GBPNZD. Each currency pair has a base currency and a quote currency. The base currency is always listed first in the pair name. So in this case, the GBP, or Great British Pound, is the base currency, and the New Zealand dollar is the quote currency. The numbers are the current exchange rate to either sell the pair or buy the pair. If you think that the GBP is going to gain strength compared to the New Zealand dollar, then you would buy the pair. If you think that the NZD is going to gain strength compared to the GBP, then you would sell the pair. The most common size for a currency transaction is called a lot. One lot is always 100,000 units of the base currency. So in this example, one lot would represent 100,000 Great British Pounds. In the example of NZD USD pair, one lot would equal 100,000 New Zealand dollars. To calculate what the margin requirement is for a currency pair, you need to know several things. You need to know what leverage you are going to use, what the actual currency exchange rate is for the pair you are trading at the time that you are entering the trade, you need to know what size of a trade you're going to make. And you also need to know the account currency conversion rate to the base currency of the pair you're trading. 
The account currency is the currency that your trading account was funded in. If you are an American citizen, you probably funded your account in US dollars. But if you live in Europe, then your account currency might be in euros or it might be in British pounds. Let's go collect all the things that we will need to calculate the margin requirement for the GBP NZD pair when our account currency is US dollars. First, we know our leverage ratio. Second, we know the current exchange rate for the pair we will be trading. Third, we have to decide on a trade size. And fourth, we have to know the exchange rate for our account currency paired with the base currency of the pair we are trading. To make the calculation, we use this formula. Take 100,000 units of the base currency and divide that by the leverage ratio. Then multiply the answer by the base currency conversion rate and that will equal the margin requirement. So in this example, we have 100,000 divided by 200 times 1.4266 and that gives us a margin requirement of $713.30. But know that often brokers will round off the margin requirement, so don't be surprised if the margin requirement your broker charges is a little bit different than what the actual calculation generates. No matter what leverage you are using, the margin requirement can differ significantly depending on the pair you are trading. In this example, I am showing the margin requirement for two different currency pairs, but each one has been calculated for a one lot trade using a 200 to 1 leverage and with an account currency of US dollars. Notice that the margin requirement for the GBP NZD pair is $714, but the margin requirement for the NZD USD pair is only $370. This is because of the vastly different amount of funds that each of the trades is controlling. The total value of the fund being controlled in the GBP NZD trade is $142,800, but the total value of the fund being controlled by the NZD USD trade is only $74,000. This is why the margin requirement for the two pairs is so different. Before you make any trade, it is really important that you know approximately what the margin requirement will be for the trade you are entering. And after you have been trading for a while, it will become rather instinctive. But until that happens, you could either do the math prior to entering every trade, or a better way is just to go to my website, www.mindyyost.com, and click on the link to the margin calculator where you can have all the data that you need in just a few clicks. To use the margin calculator, first select the account currency that is appropriate for you. Now remember, this is the currency that your account is based in. Next, select the leverage that you are using from the drop-down menu. Then enter the size of the trade that you want to make. If you want information for a trade that is less than a full lot, you can type in 0 0.1 for a mini lot or 0 0.01 for information regarding micro lots. If you want the data for a two mini lot trade, just type in 0 0.2. You get the idea. When you click Calculate, you will instantly see the margin requirement and the PIP value for all of the available currencies. Use the scroll bar on the right side of the box to see the entire list. Knowing the leverage and the associated margin requirement is important to your trading because it directly impacts the number of trades and the size of the trades 
that you can make safely at any one time in your trading account. Let's assume that you have a trading account with a balance of $5,000 and you want to make a one lot trade in the Euro USD pair. This chart shows you the huge difference in what the margin requirement is at different leverage ratios. If you are trading in the United States and are using a leverage of 50 to 1, the margin requirement for the trade would be $2,503, which accounts for half of your account balance. But if you are trading with a 200 to 1 leverage, which is actually the most common leverage offered by brokers worldwide, then the margin requirement is only $626 and represents only 12.5% of your account balance. When you close your trade, either for a profit or for a loss, whatever your margin requirement has been on the trade, that money will be refunded back into your trading account. But while the trade is open, you will not have access to these funds. Usable margin, also known as free margin, is the amount of money in your account that you can access to use either to make additional trades or to manage the temporary negative equity in trades that you might have that are going the wrong way. Your account balance minus the margin requirement equals your remaining usable margin. In this example, if you have a $5,000 account balance and you make a one lot Euro USD trade using a leverage of 50 to 1, then you can see that your remaining usable margin is only $2,497. But if you are using a leverage of 200 to 1 on that same trade and the margin requirement has only been $626, you will have a remaining usable margin of $4,374. By using the higher leverage, you will have more opportunity to make additional trades and you will have more flexibility in how you manage the trades that you have open. So in conclusion, the higher the leverage used, the more money you have in your account as usable margin to either make additional trades or to ride out trades that are in a temporarily negative condition before they become profitable. Using the correct number of trades and the correct size of trades for your account balance is critical to your success as a Forex trader. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that you could make at least five trades at any given time and that all of those trades could go up to 500 pips negative at the same time before you would run out of usable margin and thus incur a margin call. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should ever allow your trades to go 500 pips negative or that you should let your account get anywhere close to a margin call. But I am saying that if you trade using this formula, your account will always have enough usable margin cushion available so that you will have the time you need to construct a mitigation plan for trades before they get into serious trouble. We all know that Forex is inherently risky, but the biggest risk that faces a Forex trader is not fraud, it's not a bad broker or anything else. It is the risk that the trader brings to the table himself by over trading his account and not having enough cushion in the account to properly manage the open positions. This is why most Forex traders freak out when trades go 20 or 30 pips ugly, so they close the trade for a loss and little by little their account balance shrinks instead of grows. And that is really sad. 
To calculate the number of trades that you should take in your account, use the following formula. Divide your account balance by 5. Let's use an example of an account with $5,000. Divide $5,000 by 5, and that tells us that each trade should not be allotted more than $1,000 or 20% of our account balance. The $1,000 for the trade has to accommodate both the margin requirement and at least enough usable margin cushion to let that trade ride potentially 500 pips negative. So how do we know what size the trade should be? In general, if you are trading with a $5,000 account balance and with a leverage of 50 to 1, you should not make your trades larger than two mini lots each, and you should limit the number of trades to a maximum of three that are at risk at any given time. If you are trading with a leverage of 200 to 1, you should not make your trades larger than three mini lots each, and you should not exceed a maximum of five trades at risk at any given time. If you are trading with a leverage of 500 to 1, you should not make your trades larger than four mini lots each, and you should not exceed a maximum of five trades at risk at any given time. You might find that by using this structure for your trading, you might make less on each trade than you currently do, but because you won't have as much pressure to close trades as soon when they are going negative, you will take far fewer losses and overall your account will grow faster and more consistently than it probably does now. I've talked about trades being at risk and you're probably wondering what that means. A trade is at risk if it does not have a stop on it that is protecting at least some profit or when it has not been hedged or offset. And also, you should always have a plan to mitigate or offset the loss being incurred by any single trade long before it would ever have an opportunity to dilute your account balance of 500 pips worth of equity. To be a really great Forex trader, not only do you have to know how to properly size your trades, but you also have to have a coherent trading strategy that has a history of producing a win ratio of 95% or greater, and you have to have a strategy to mitigate negative equity in trades that don't go your way. But I'll save information about those things for a different video. If you liked this video and would like to learn more about how I trade Forex without taking losses, check out some of the classes, workshops, and mentoring programs that I offer for both beginning and experienced Forex traders. I really hope this video has brought value to your trading. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you'll know when I do my next video. Thanks for watching.